Mercy, mercy me. Ah, things ain't what they used to be. Anybody know when that song came out? What year? Oh, they're all getting... <laughs> close, and it's close. It was June 10th of 71. Now, Marvin Gaye, this is over 50 years ago, he had concern about our world and our environment and our need to take better care. Hence the song, Mercy, Mercy Me, Things Ain't What They Used to Be. And, uh, yeah, answer that. God's calling. Mercy, mercy me. You know, here's the sad thing for me, is to realize that 50 years later, has life and our environment gotten any better or worse? Well, pretty much worse. Now, I'll be honest with you, the two songs that I selected and Terry was good with um, aren't necessarily uplifting songs today, you know? And that's okay, because we're here to raise consciousness, raising consciousness. These songs are about raising our consciousness. Our mission statement, which we read today, and I would like to invite you to do that with me again, is to raise consciousness, transform lives, heal the planet, one person at a time, beginning with me. Very good. You know, and here's the thing. Those aren't just words that we say every third Sunday. My goal is that we embody and we live these words. To live. The raising consciousness has to come first. Because actually it's through the raising of our consciousness is that their lives are transformed. Our planet is healed. So today we're going to be raising our consciousness. So the words raising consciousness, what does that actually mean? Well, when I think about raising something, there's an increase. And consciousness, I think of awareness. So we're going to increase our awareness. And, um, and then we'll go from there. So it's increasing our awareness. Now, here's the question. What is it that we're raising our consciousness or increasing our, our uh, what did I say, awareness of? Well, number one. We are raising our consciousness to the belief, to the truth, that spirit, God, the divine, is everywhere present in every single thing. There is no exceptions. It's in that which is seen. It's in inanimate and animate objects. It's all that there is, this presence and power that we call life in infinite forms. And then the second thing that we want to be more aware of are the universal life principles and laws. There are universal principles and laws that work all the time for everyone, everywhere. And I didn't get these taught these <laughs> until I found a new thought church. And then I was like, oh, I get this. That totally makes sense. We have, Unity has a book called The Five Principles. It's a small book, but it is the principles that work no matter where you are, it's all about the divine being in any culture, any nation, any, quote, religion. It's spirituality. So those are the two things. First of all, you've got awareness of the divine, everywhere present, the universal principles that work. And if you don't want to know more about those, get the book. Next, that everything is one. That is the other piece of awareness, to realize that everything is one. Now, it looks like there's separation, but there isn't separation. We are one. We are individualized expressions of that one. And in that understanding, we live in a world that has a lot of polarities. On the horizontal life, line of life, there's hot and cold. There's up. Yeah. There's life death, there's light, darkness. Now, the world is not about polarities. It's taking that horizontal line and flipping it into vertical. Everything is vibrational. There's high vibes and low vibes. Everything is vibrating. It's frequencies. 
and we know that in quantum physics that everything is in in right now whether you know it or not you're a vibration of some sort and where you are emotions are all about the um, vibration it's a barometer to know where you are in life now the higher vibrations are when you're experiencing peace or beauty joy love harmony wholeness healthfulness everything is in that space of the high vibes and when you're in low vibes you're not having that there's anger there's sadness there's disconnect there's uh, upset so here's the truth the truth is only two things are happening in life want to know what they are okay I'll tell you afterwards <laughs> The two things that are happening, either we're coming from love, high vibe, because you're in your high vibes, you're coming from an experience of love in your high vibes, or there is a call for love. So when you're in a low vibration, or you see anything that's in a lower vibration, there's a call for love. And how, when you see yourself or someone else, how do I raise my frequency? How do I raise up to a, a step higher in the frequency and see everything is either calling for love or it's coming from love and our job is to raise our consciousness when we see ourselves or another or perhaps even our planet earth that is calling out and crying and saying we're having a challenger are you with me so far on this vibrational thing yes good all right so I don't have to make us more aware you folks all know, I don't have to increase your awareness of our global ecological crisis. It is actually happening, and it is continuing, and it isn't reducing, it's getting bigger. We've got global warming, you know, temperatures are rising, deforestation, we've got endangered species, we've got raging fires, drought, all kinds of things that are giving us signs that Mother Earth is crying and saying, are you paying attention? And maybe we're paying attention, but do you know what to do about it? And that's where we're going to go today. So how many of you um, would like to see the, our world in a better place environmentally? I know everybody's hands up, of course. How many of you actively recycle? Pretty much everyone. Okay, so now we go into some questions for you. So how much of our, what you put in that blue bin, because I know you're all careful with that and you're making sure and maybe even cleaning out the things and putting it in there. What percentage is actually being recycled? 5%, 15%, 2%. So you have an awareness that we have an issue here with recycling. I thought, hey, I'm doing a good job. Do you know who's behind the recycling programs? those that make plastic. So we are feeling good about ourselves. So the sad thing is, is uh, according to National Geographic, you know, and there's different parts that are being uh, recycled. There's glass and there's the paper and, and uh, cardboard stuff. So they say about 30%. But when we're talking plastics, and you have more plastics in your house than anything. Plastic is everywhere. I personally, Greenpeace says that maybe 6% of our plastics are recycled. So you're putting all that stuff into the recycle bin and then only 6% is getting recycled. Where's the other 94% going? Ocean, landfills, I'm sorry. I, it hurts my heart. And I would imagine it hurts your heart too because you're caring people and so with that awareness, because I didn't really know that until recently, so it can be depressing. It can bring you down when you think about all the plastic, that our world is based in plastic. And can we even do anything about it? And I'm going to say yes. And here's the thing. I don't want, how, how many of you want to be depressed? <laughs> hey, nobody's hand went up. Okay, so we don't want to be depressed, so what are we going to do? 
uh, with that, not being depressed about all the things that we're going, is it even going to make a difference? And what can I do? Um, so we're going to, what we do is we continue to raise our consciousness and increase our awareness, which is what I have done recently for this talk because Spirit put it on me and said, you know what? This is important. This is our world. There's this generations to come. I might not see how our world is going, but I'm contributing to the problem, and I want to take some responsibility. So there is a book that I, I actually, on uh, April 16th, right around Earth Day, we talked a little bit about this, but I need to bring our subject back to this. This book is called Spiritual Ecology, The Cry of the Earth. And it has 23 um, essays, Thich Nhat Hanh, Joanna Macy, uh, Vandana Shiva, and Richard Rohr. They're all about the cry of the earth. And the person who put, it, put this together, Le, um, Llewellyn Von Lee. So I'm going to quote a couple things that he, Van, uh, Lee, Llewellyn Van Lee says. He says, if I have learned anything after half a century of spiritual practice, it is the power of love. At this time of ecological crisis, as we are tearing apart the fragile web of life, there is a vital need for us to love the earth, to bring her into our hearts and prayers. We have a spiritual as well as a physical responsibility for our common home. And she is calling out to us, crying for our help and healing. In the words of Thich Nhat Hanh, real change will only happen when we fall in love with the planet. Are you in love with the planet? Only love can show us how to live in harmony with nature and with each other. Jennifer Berezan, B-E-R-E-Z-A-N, yeah, Z-A-N, and it's called Praises for the Earth. I'm actually looking to bring and show the entire video, which I just got. It's an hour long because it's gorgeous and it's about falling in love. Uh, there isn't going to be anything up here except a, a, a picture, so you can look at the picture, but I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, and as you're listening to this, feel the love as in praising for the Earth. See if you can start to fall in love with the song itself and the words being spoken. So I invite you to close your eyes and just take a few deep breaths, noticing your body, opening your heart and your ears to falling in love with our planet or our world. of buffaloes, her buffaloes, hills. We have a beautiful mother. Her oceans are wombs. Her wombs, oceans.
have a beautiful mother. Her teeth, the white stones at the edge of the water, the summer grasses, her plentiful hair. We have a beautiful mother. Her green lap, immense. Her brown embrace, eternal. Her blue body, everything we know. Have a beautiful mother, Jennifer Berzan. Going back to Llewellyn, we need to awaken to the power of love in the world. It is our love for the earth that will heal what we have desecrated, that will guide us through this wasteland and help us bring light back to our darkening world. Love links us all together in the most mysterious ways, and love can guide our hearts and hands. And the central note of love is oneness. Love speaks the language of oneness, of unity rather than separation. Love can open us to a deep participation in the life of the whole and teach us to listen, to listen to life to feel life's heartbeat and sense its soul. It can open us to the sacred within all of creation and can reconnect us with the primal knowing that the divine is present in everything, in every breath, every stone, every animate and inanimate thing. In the oneness of love, everything is included and everything is sacred. Everything is sacred. Some of you may or may not be uh, familiar with shamanism, indigenous cultures, people of all lands, and that they know, and they know without knowing here, that everything is alive. The inanimate is just as alive as that which we see as, quote, life. So do you all have a piece of uh, nature that you received when you came in? If anyone does not have a piece of nature, please raise your hand, and I believe our um, Terry will help you have that. 
So we're going to do a little meditation over here and over here in the front as well. So, okay. So you have a piece of nature. And I'm going to invite you to do a short meditation with me and holding that piece of nature in your hands. First of all, I'm going to ask that you just simply close your eyes and I'm going to begin with a short reading before the meditation. Know that everything has a voice. Everything has a voice. A message to share if we are willing to hear, to listen, to let go of judgment, to be open to receiving the message or teaching from nature. Come and listen to my story of Mother Nature in all of her glory, of gardens filled with precious flowers in which I love to walk for hours. And sometimes, just like in a dream, I sit beside a crystal stream, or maybe in the water wade, or lay contented in a shade. Come and hear of scenes so grand, like oceans blue with golden sand, and mountains leaping toward the sky, where gay and cheerful birds go by and how at dusk the sun do set, and all my care I soon forget, as twinkling stars and moon shine bright, and in my heart is sweet delight. Come and listen. Come and listen. Noticing your breath, and the object of nature that you're holding. You may either keep your eyes closed or you may look at the piece of nature as I ask these questions and we listen. The first question, why did I choose this nature piece? Why did I choose this nature piece? I chose it because good and now the next question why did this nature piece choose me why did this nature piece choose me Nature responds, I chose you because. And breathing, the next question is, how am I like this piece of nature? How am I like this piece of nature? How are we the same? Final question, what does this piece of nature want me to know? What does this piece of nature want me to know? we can continue this conversation with the piece of nature we have later if we wish. Take a breath now and thank the piece of nature that has been with you. 
and after you thank the piece of nature, you may open your eyes. Any messages did you receive? Good if you didn't, and good if you did. It's an opportunity to see if we can hear. Now, I'm going to give you, of course, an acronym, because you wouldn't have a service without having Liz's acronym. And so what is it that we can engage in? And it is, of course, going to be EARTH is the, is the acronym. And we start with the E to educate. We need to educate ourselves. I was reading about this plastic thing and I was not happy with it. Uh, if you want to know more about why isn't the plastic being recycled, Google it. Google will love to tell you more. So educate yourself. I didn't know what I have learned in the last 24 or 48 hours. So educate yourself in what is really going on in the world. Then you want to take the second step in your education. And you want to spend some time reading some essays. We have a few of these books, The Spiritual Ecology, The Cry of the Earth, these essays. Now, I took this kind of large book, and I said, Spirit, if there's anything in here you would like me to bring to the talk, please share with me. So I open up the book, and I was like, of course. How many of you know what Darshan is? Okay, a few of you. I opened it up to this chapter by Shepali Patel, and it was on Darshan. And this was section five. Darshan means to uh, see the divine in an image, a person, or a set of ideas. This is done through the act of bearing witness. It is a practice and experience and a vision, a lived understanding that everything is one. The solar systems, the earth, the entire universe are all emanating from the one. Darshan can be a powerful aid to creating vision, creating and cultivating true insight, and seeing with piercing insight and expansive perspective. Here's the part that really caught my attention. Embodied in the definition of darshan is the concept that the experience is a two-way street. You see the other, you bear witness to something that is gazing back at you. Okay, so you bear witness to something that is gazing back to you. I want you to contemplate that this week that everything that you are bearing witness to is gazing back at you. Now, it's real easy for me to do that right here looking at you because if I'm bearing witness to you, you are gazing back to me. But what if everything is gazing back at me? Oh, yes, you're being watched. <laughs> but to realize and think about that, this two-way street, everything I bear witness to you bear witness, it, it bears witness back to you. You can, have con you can have conversations with anything. You know, have the ears to listen. I think Jesus of the Great Way Shower said at one point, if you tell my disciples to shut up, the stones will call out. They will praise me. So it was very interesting because he understood that everything has life and you can listen. And indigenous cultures know that better than any of us. We've lost it in our technology, most of that. So you've got the E, we're educating ourselves. A, you gotta take some action. You know, they say um, a vision without action is a dream. Action without vision is a nightmare. So, so you have to do both the inner and the outer. You know, it's all about the inner and outer, and so actions. And I'm going to give you some actions. Um, and part of it is uh, there's three books. You know, this is part of my education. One of them is called Spiritual Ecology, the 10 Practices to Awaken the Sacred in Everyday Life. I think we have lost touch 
and it's so easy in our technology world, some of us might take that walk in nature, but what if everything you do is a spiritual practice? Everything you are doing, every breath you take is a spiritual practice. This book came out of the, the first book, and it is simple, and there's exercises and practices that will, and you engage in, and you will find the sacred in every part of life. This I highly, highly recommend. The second book, I have a class doing this, it's Fully Awake and Truly Alive. It also has easy to do exercises. I love books that give me the exercises, right? And now here's what I'm gonna suggest, is you find somebody to do these with. You say, hey, Marietta, you want to be my partner? And we're going to read chapter one of this, and we're going to talk next week on Monday at 2 o'clock about what we experienced when we did our practices. It's called accountability. I don't know about you, but hey, I can go, yeah, I'm doing it. Am I doing it? Probably not, or maybe. So an accountability partner, someone to share that with, because when you're doing something that is shared, it, it takes off. It has more energy. So find somebody, one of these books, both of these books, will give you the practices. And keep it simple. And if you ask somebody, like if you ask Janie and she says no, don't stop. Ask somebody else. Ask Sandy. Ask a friend. Ask a partner. Ask somebody who's here or not here. These books will assist you in relocating the sacredness in every single thing. Washing the dishes. Uh, making the bed, cleaning the toilet is a sacred work. You don't think about it. We don't think about these things. But what if you did? How would that change your relationship with the divine that is with you everywhere? The second book, or the third book, there's four books. This one is a must-have, okay? You, you, you can't not have this book. I am blown away, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy Decker, for in tell, giving me this book, How to Go, in parentheses, Almost Zero Waste, Over 150 Steps to More susten Sustainable Living at Home, School, Work, and Beyond. I have a few books out there, but How to Go, Almost Zero Waste. This is the best book ever. I didn't even want to do my talk yesterday because I'm reading things and I'm going and I'm circling the ones I'm doing. I'm putting check marks by the one I want to do, that I need to do, that I can do. And the thing is, is this stuff is easy. There are so many things that I could be doing differently. You know, when I go, it's so easy to pick up a package of a pound or two pounds of carrots. What if you went to the store that didn't have the plastic wrap on it, and you brought your own bag. I'm telling you, there's so many simple things that we can do. And this actually gives you, I mean, it's like short, half a page. And it tells you how much effort, how much time, how much energy, um, the cost, and how much impact that one action can take. Like I said, must have book. Now, I'm not gonna get into all of this funness, but there is funness to be had because I'm serious about changing my life. Um, how many of you use dryer sheets? Uh, uh huh. Well, you, I just purchased these. These are the natural fabric softener. They're the 100% New Zealand wool balls that are going to thump around in my in my what do you call it dryer. So so there's all these things. Okay, so, uh, do you know how much of this goes into landfills, oceans? Oh my God, I, my heart breaks. I can't do this anymore. Now, one of the things I went to, the, the laundry sheets, okay? Um, you know, you get educated and you think you're doing better, and then you find out something else about even these. These are cool. They're, you put them in the washer, they're less... Um, polluted because there's not as much plastic. I know you all carry your bags, right? Um, I have now started carrying into restaurants. When you go into a restaurant and you might take some food home, you put this in your bag and you go, can you use this container? 
little things that we can do. Now, I don't know about you, but I have this in my car, and then I go into the restaurant and I forget it. I used to do that with bags. Now I'm going to retrain myself. There are all, all of these wonderful things. We're no longer buying plastic bottled water in our church. We're using these and filtered water. Okay? There's just so many things that we can do. I'm notorious. I used to buy these all the time and add them to my water. I am going to stop doing that. I have more of these glass containers. I'm actually going now, if I want to put a little ad, I can use some, some Sevia because it's aluminum and it can be more recycled than this thing, which will end up in a landfill. I'm so, I, I'm blown away by how many things that I could do different. I want you all to do little things. Don't be overwhelmed. Oh, and by the way, where's my, um, where's my other book? Oh, there it is. One thing I went to yesterday, and thank you, Sandy, for this one as well. There's a place, how many of you know of the place called Soap and Supply? Oh, uh -huh. it's right here in town. I went in and I met the uh, owner, Amy Harmon, at the Soap and Supply Refill Beauty Bar on Rosina Street. There's a few of these that will be out there on the table along with some books. This is an education. You can take your bottle and go and get it refilled. All kinds of product. I'm blown away. She did tell me, don't get overwhelmed. I said, OK. So I'm not going to get overwhelmed. I'm telling you, please don't get overwhelmed. One thing at a time. Do one thing every week that is different. Get this book. Find out how simple it can be to change our world, our ecology. You know, it's up to me and you. The time is now. I can't not, not do this. I'm excited. Like I said, I'm learning so much. So I'm going to close with a prayer. So I invite you to close your eyes. Take a breath. This might sound like a familiar prayer. Words changed. Our mother, the earth. Our mother who is the earth, nurturing are your ways. Thy healing come, wholeness be done in us as it is beyond. Thank you for this day, our daily bread, our water, our air, and for all the blessings you bestow. And forgive us for any harm we may have created as we atone for that harm. Lead us not into judgment, but deliver us to balance once again. For thine are the waters of life, the hills, valleys, and plains of home. Your way, the glory of us, the love of us, and the grace of us. And so it is. Now you have your assignment. You're going to continue to educate, act, R, remember spirit, remember the planet in your prayers, T, give thanks to the earth, and H, honor by hearing what she's saying. And so it is.